Hello everyone, welcome to this new course, the competitive bootcamp, that the one bootcamp of algorithm that one needs to solve most of the competitive coding questions. This is a series I'd request you to learn each day a new algorithm before you get to your bed. To subscribe to my channel and uh, like and share if you learn something new today. Let's just start with our day one of the bootcamp. Today, the topic in our plate is the greedy algorithm or the greedy paradigm. Uh, it's a greedy technique. Uh, let us see what is in there for us. What is a greedy algorithm? A greedy algorithm, as the name suggests, always makes the choice that seems to be best at, at the moment. So whenever we are solving a problem, we would select something which is best for us according to the question, each one at a step. This means that it makes a locally optimal choice in the hope that this choice will lead to a globally optimal solution. Guys, just hold on. There is a beautiful example just right now after these two paragraphs. How to decide which choice is optimal? Assume that you have an objective function that needs to be optimized. Whenever you will get a function that has to be optimized, either maximized or minimized, at a given point, a greedy algorithm makes greedy choice at each step. So at each step, a greedy algorithm would make a choice that the next step should be the minimum or the maximum according to the question. The greedy algorithm has only one shot to compute and it never goes back and reverses the decision. Well, let us look at a very beautiful example right now. This example where there is a lady who has an infinite sack of bags of $20 coins, $10 coins and $5 coins. There is this man who asks for a $35 a transaction. Now the girl and he wants it in minimum number of coins. So this is the uh, question that this man wants $35 in minimum number of coins. Now this girl, this lady who has an infinite sack bag of $20 coins, $10 coins and $5 coins can provide the man in a lot of different ways like he can she can give seven five rupee coins uh, seven five dollar coins to him that would account for thirty five dollar or she can give three ten dollar coin and a five dollar coin which makes it thirty five but we'll have to decide that in what way will the man get a thirty five dollar with minimum number of coins now here is the greedy technique, here is the greedy way of thinking that it that at each step we will take up a solution that is locally optimal for us. Now suppose we take at each step a maximum denomination that we have and check that whether that denomination crosses 35 or not. So we take 20 and we see that is 20 greater than 35 we say no so fine we take 20 20 dollar or 20 dollar coin next again we try to take the largest denomination a 20 dollar coin so we add a 20 to it and we see it becomes 40 now 40 is clearly greater than 30 so we cannot use this denomination so we take the next highest denomination which is a 10 dollar coin we take a 10 dollar coin and we add it we see it's a $30 right now and $30 is well less than $35 so it's fine. Next again we try to take a $10 coin or a $20 coin and we see that it exceeds $35 coin and hence we find that there is just we can add a $5 to it so $5 and it adds to $35. So, by using the minimum greedy way, we found that if we give a $20 coin and a $10 coin and a $5 coin, we find that this man is able to solve the question using a greedy technique. So a greedy algorithm is a simple intuitive algorithm that is used in optimization problems. Whenever you see an optimization problem, either a maximum or a minimum, you will have to think in a way either in a greedy way or in one more way which is the dynamic programming way we will learn about it the dynamic programming the algorithm makes the optimal choice at each step as it attempts to find the overall optimal way to solve the entire problem like we saw right now and we'll see another great problem up next 
Greedy algorithms are quite successful in some programs like Huffman Encoding and Dijkstra's algorithm. We'll learn about Huffman Encoding and Dijkstra's algorithm in a separate video in this particular series which is used to find the shortest path. So does this statement mean that greedy algorithm also fail in some problems? Yes, greedy algorithm fail in certain problems and this is where we so does greedy algorithm fail is our next big question. Let us see this particular question in the graph below. A greedy algorithm is trying to find the longest path through the graph. So we have to find the longest path through the graph. The number inside each node contributes to a total length. To do this, it selects the largest number. Now, we have learned that in greedy, we select the optimum solution at each particular step to move ahead. And then we see whether it's a global maximum or a global minimum according to our need. Here, we have to find the largest path. We have to find a global maximum. So we approach it in a way that we take local maximum at each step and see that whether the total path is a global maximum or not. Now we, we at each step, now this is 7, now this is 3 and 12, which is larger? 12. So locally 12 is our best choice. Now since we come to 12, next is 6 and 5, which is greater? 6. 6 is our local best choice. Then it's 9. So 7 plus 12 plus 6 plus 9 is the total length that we get. But is it the correct solution? Is this the, the maximum path that we can travel? What is the answer to it? The answer is no. This is not the optimum solution. The correct optimum solution is 7, 3, 1 and 99 which is greater than 7, 12, 6 and 9. Now this is clear to us because we see no other combination of nodes which will come close to a sum of 99. So whatever path we choose, we know it should have 99 in its path. This is the only option that includes 99. This is by our visual understanding. So the greedy algorithm fails to solve a problem because to reach 99, we have to make a lot of decisions that are against the greedy algorithm. since. It, it could there could be a huge number of that algorithm hasn't seen yet it could up ending selecting a path that does not include a huge number exactly the solutions to the sub problems for finding the largest sum or the longest path do not necessarily appear in the solution of the total problem correct so we saw that how greedy algorithm fails in this case how to Create a greedy algorithm. This is a beautiful small uh, question here in for you guys. Being a very busy person, you have exactly t times to do some interesting things and you want to do maximum number of things. So you have just a limited t time and you want you want to do maximum number of things, right? So you have a you have a n number of things and each thing has suppose say some time limit. Say here. You have six hours and uh, you have there is a task that has five hours there is a task that is four three four two one so how many you have to maximize the number of tasks using a greedy algorithm so what is the way of doing it see clearly we can understand that we can sort the array in a non decreasing order we can sort it in one two three four five and check the summation until it is until it is greater than or equal to 6 so the current time is 1 number of things you have done is 1 the current time is 3 the number of things you have done is 2 current time is 6 the number of things that you have done is 3 after the fourth iteration the current time becomes 4 which is greater than t therefore the answer is 3 so there is a maximum of 3 things that you can do in a given time of 6 hours according to this particular question in this algorithm we used greedy we, we were greedy that we have to exactly take the minimum uh, amount of time that a work needs to arrive at a global maximum. Maximum being the maximum amount of tasks that you want to perform. Now, where what is the application of greedy? There are a lot of applications of greedy. Here are some examples, activity selection problems, Egyptian fraction, job sequencing, Huffman coding, uh, all these Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm like we have studied all of these will come up with all of these algorithms up next stay tuned subscribe to this channel 
it's going to help you a lot there is going to be each day a new algorithm learn it apply it in your long challenges circuits uh, code forces everywhere thank you if you like the video if it helped you a bit do share like and subscribe thank you